Hello everybody, it's Friday, that means it's time for another topic of the week. So, first things first, last week's topic on your most hated aesthetic. A lot of people, a lot of strong opinions. I was not surprised at all to see many responses to that. Definitely go back, just look in the comments, there's so much good discussion going on. And I think one of the things that made me the most happy was that I am not alone on Nurgle. Yes! Alright. It's good to know there are others out there who share my particular, shall we say, nonplussed nature at that uh, that particular aesthetic. It's funny though because it's very much like a, a sort of barbell type of thing. It's an inverse bell curve, right? Uh, people were either very much for or very much against. There wasn't most, you know, nobody was just like, I don't know, I'm meh on weird rotting pustules and stuff. You know, no. people either loved it, the loved the sort of art you could do with it or hated it. So, very cool stuff. Loved all the discussion around that. Loved everybody sharing their own personal sense of, you know, what they sort of find appealing. Because in the end, I do love it that there are aesthetics I hate. And I think that's something that's easy to overlook. But the there is a real value to having aesthetics in the game that you hate. Because, as I talked about a long time ago, and I kind of mentioned this, things that elicit strong reactions are the things that people really fall in love with. But that means that there's going to be another group of people, another cohort, who also hate it. But that has value. As long as you've got a wide enough range of that, um, it has value. Because then you get a bunch of really intense, passionate people who have something in the game that they can grab onto and really feel like it's their own. So I think that's really important. Um, so I'm glad that those things are around that I hate, and I'm glad that other people love them, because overall, in the end, that's what makes it such a strong game and such a compelling universe. Uh, all right, so let's turn to this week's topic. And this week's topic of the week, I'm really shocked. I had to honestly, once again, I had to go back and look at the, the entire sort of list of every topic of the week over the past two years to figure out that I hadn't done this one, and, and it amazed me when I thought of it. Uh, I want to talk about just painting miniatures. Now, I have a very specific set of questions here, but it amazes me that I've never broached some of these topics before. So, I obviously, as, as those of you who follow my channel probably know, I I absolutely love the, the hobby aspect of painting of miniatures. Um, I, as I've mentioned before offhandedly, it's something I try to do between like 40 and 60 hours a week, depending. Uh, on how much I can fit in there and not sleep and things like that, which is a great luxury. Um, but I do it because it's something I really love, and I, I've, I've come to fall deeper in love with it over the past several years. Um, and, you know, in, in being this last week, I was on the road the whole week, so I haven't really gotten to paint anything, and I found I really did miss it. And so that got me thinking about how people look at painting in general. And, and I think here's the question. The, my question is, would you still do, would you still paint if the model had no game purpose? And I, I think that that's an interesting sort of dividing line in the nature of how you view painting in the hobby. You know, one of the things I've worked on, and, and I've done a couple over my time, besides competition pieces, which still tend to be basically the normal models that you're going to, you know, that you would use for a game, you might not ever use them for a game because they're on like a display base, but theoretically they're still basically the same model. When you move into something like painting busts, which I've done a few of, that's a wholly different story, right? Because that is not a game thing at all, it's, it has no purpose. Uh, uh, that is to say, other than be a, a creative outlet of some kind of piece of art. And that got me thinking about the nature of, you know, why we paint. And I thought that was an interesting line. Would you paint if there was no game on the other side? I don't mean as much, because that could be a thing. Maybe you'd paint less or something like that. I don't mean at all. Okay, that's where I think the interesting line is. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think there is anything bad about the idea that you're painting because they are pieces for a game. That's actually quite a good thing 
because that means you get even more value out of them. You extricate, not only can you create something beautiful that's a piece of art, but you can also then play with that piece of art. That's amazing, right? Um, but I think that there is another payoff there, right? And without that payoff, you have to be sort of interested in it for its own sake. Um, so I guess what I want to so that's sort of my question, the, the high question. And the sort of sub questions under that are, is painting at all a chore for you do you and, and yeah, again this might be one that has some nuance to the answer because i'm sure many people have sat down and said to themselves even if they t normally like painting they've sat down and been like "Ugh, i don't really want to paint this thing or tonight or whatever but i've got to do it for a tournament or for a game or for whatever um so i mean i'm sure we've all been in that situation i i love painting and i've been in that situation last time i painted some horde of 50 guys i'm sure i was on that situation by you know guy 47 um so but i i think that the deeper question is is it purely that or mostly that that's where the the answer gets interesting right do you look at it as the end is justifying the, the, the means, the journey, right? Like, because I'll get to play with these, I just need to get them painted. Or are you interested in the process itself? Does that have equal, or perhaps even, you know, where, where the values lie um, as far as how you value the process, the creation, the painting, all those sorts of things? Um, yeah, so there you go. That's the topic of the week. Uh, on painting miniatures, that's what we'll call it, right? Uh, because how much do you value the painting? How important is it to you to, uh, you know, to have some use for them at the end, to have a game for them? And maybe this is another interesting thing to tack on. Uh, if the figures came pre-painted, when you look at games like X-Wing, which some people do repaint and stuff, but when you look at, at games like that, what do you think of that sort of thing, you know? Are you, would you love to have some of your miniatures pre-painted uh, or not? Is that, does that diminish the value to you? Interested in your responses? As always, drop those comments down below. Let me know what you think. Or of course, make a video response. All the video responses you make, well, they'll be linked right down in the description. And as always, you can find last week's video and all the great discussion on it. That's down there too. Thanks very much. As always, appreciate it. We'll see you next time.